if life was perfect, what would happen next? Man, his mission is to inspire people all around the world through his interviews with successful businessmen and women who live their lives as the passionate few. His desire is for his audience to be inspired and also live their lives passionately. The Passionate Few podcast is a heavy hitting interview with series where Omar digs deep into the mind and lives of inspiring professionals from various walks of life to discuss all things passionate, purpose, and profit. At this stage, I've interviewed over $10 billion, a little bit over that worth of entrepreneurs, men and women from all walks of life. And really the premise of it is to document stories of people who've gone from rock bottom to rock star in a certain capacity, right? So here I am, 24 years old, I'm working at Tesla. Um, you know, I'm making money, but I'm not fulfilled. And I think a lot of people can relate where maybe you have a job, you have a profession, maybe you're starting to make money. Everyone else is saying, good job. That's awesome. You're for Tesla. You know, that's cool. And, and all that. But I, in my soul, it was killing me every day. And, you know, every day everybody's going to work. All they're thinking about is getting promoted to sales manager or outselling the next guy. And that's their whole, their whole 10 year plan is to just do that. And I always in my heart felt like I wanted to do something more. I just didn't know what. So I was unfulfilled at work. Financially, I'm starting to go in debt, I'm losing control of my body completely. My mind is going numb because I'm just putting all these substances in it. And dude, I lost control. I went down this dark, dark hole and quit my job at Tesla and just went $30,000 into debt. And I'm just gaining weight. Like it's just, I'm off the deep end. And uh, I remember, bro, I had $300 to my name. This was four years ago. I'm 24 years old. So imagine I'm 24 years old. I got $300 to my name. And, um, I'll never forget, man. I was, I was just, I was in my car. I was like sleeping around places in my car, like just smoking weed. And just like, I was listening to Tony Robbins though. Cause I was like, man, this guy's going to save me. If life was perfect, what would happen next? Mm -hmm. If life was perfect. And JC, I got to tell you, bro, in that moment, I thought, whoa, like, think about that. How many times in life do people ask you? And for anybody listening or watching this, how many times have people ever given you permission in life? to say, what would happen next in your life if life was perfect? I would inspire millions of people. I'd surround myself with some of the most inspiring people on the planet. I would make millions of dollars. I would uh, have a team that's on a mission with me. I would have clarity for the next decade. I would be clear in my mission. Um, I, would, um, you know, I would be sober. I would be healthy. I would be in a loving relationship. And I just wrote down all these prophecies, man, of everything I wanted in my life. When I talk to broke people, they're vague. When I talk to successful people, they are precise as hell. I was with John Paul DeJoria, um, you know, multi-billion dollar entrepreneur, creator, Patron Tequila, Paul Mitchell Shampoo and Conditioner. I was with him in, uh, the month was November, and in earlier that year, I forget what month, but a few months prior, maybe six, five, six months prior, he had just sold Patron Tequila for 5.1 billion cash. Cash, JC, cash. This guy at 37 was living in his car homeless at 37 you know so this is why i'm passionate about what i do is because it goes to show that no matter where you come from and for anybody listening uh or people who enjoy jc stuff or considering working with jc or you know whatever transforming your life in whatever capacity is like no matter where you're at right now you can make anything happen we move towards the image we hold in our minds not the present reality the, the reality in our mind has more to do with the reality of our future than the reality of our present our present is a reflection of our past yeah right? It's a reflection of the actions we've taken till now, but our future isn't predicated on now. Our future is predicated on the image we hold in our mind. The greatest belief you could ever have is a belief in a creator God. The second greatest belief you could ever have is a belief in you, who you were born to be, who you are, and who you can become.